Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found, was blind, but now I see. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The Lord be with you. My dear friends, we gather here on this Friday of the 19th week in Ordinary Time. As we gather here today, celebrating in God's love for us, we had an entire week almost of looking at great saints and martyrs. Today we recognize our God in the ordinariness of our lives. We realize that we have sinned and we need to ask God today for forgiveness, that our hearts may be converted and filled with not hatred or bitterness, but with love. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, who taught by the Holy Spirit, we dare to call our Father. Bring, we pray, to perfection in our hearts the spirit of adoption as your sons and daughters that we might merit to enter into the inheritance which you have promised. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The word of the Lord came to me, Son of man, make known to Jerusalem her abominations. Thus says the Lord God to Jerusalem, By origin and birth you are of the land of Canaan. Your father was an Amorite, your mother was a Hittite. As for your birth, the day you were born, your navel cord was not cut. You were neither washed with water nor anointed, nor were you rubbed with salt nor swaddled in swaddling clothes. No one looked on you with pity or compassion to do any of these things for you. Rather, you were thrown out on the ground as something loathsome the day you were born. Then I passed by and saw you weltering in your blood. I said to you, live in your blood and grow like a plant in the field. You grew and developed. You became the age of puberty. Your breasts were formed. Your hair had grown. But you were still stark naked. Again, I passed by you and saw that you were now old enough for love. So I spread the corner of my cloak over you to cover your nakedness. I swore an oath to you and entered into a covenant with you. You became mine, says the Lord God. Then I bathed you with water, washed away your blood, and anointed you with oil. I clothed you with an embroidered ground, put sandals of fine leather on your feet. I gave you a fine linen sash and silk robes to wear. I adorned you with jewelry. I put bracelets on your arms a necklace around your neck, a ring in your nose, pennants in your ears, and a glorious diadem upon your head. Thus you were adorned with gold and silver. Your garments were of fine linen silk and embroidered cloth. Fine flour, honey, and oil were your food. You were exceedingly beautiful with the dignity of a queen. You were renowned among the nations of your beauty, perfect as it was. Because of my splendor, which I had bestowed on you, says the Lord God. But you were captivated by your own beauty. You used your renown to make yourself a harlot. You lavished your harlotry on every passerby whose own you became. Yet I will remember the covenant I made with you when you were a girl, and I set up an everlasting covenant with you that you may remember or be covered with confusion and that you will utterly be silenced for shame when I pardon you for all you have done, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You have turned from your anger. You have turned from your anger. God indeed is my Savior. I am confident and unafraid. My strength and my courage is the Lord. He has been my Savior. With joy you will draw water at the fountain of salvation. You have turned from your anger. Give thanks to the Lord, acclaim his name. Among the nations make known his deeds. Proclaim how exalted is your name. 
you have turned from your anger. Sing praise to the Lord for his glorious achievement. Let this be known throughout all the earth. Shout with exaltation, O city of Zion, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. You have turned from your anger. Alleluia, alleluia. Receive the word of God, not as the word of men, but as it truly is, the word of God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Some Pharisees approached Jesus and tested him, saying, is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife for any cause whatever? He said in reply, Have you not read that from the beginning the Creator made them male and female, and said, For this reason a man shall leave his father and his mother, and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore what God has joined together, man must not separate. Then he said to him, Then why did God Moses command that a man give the woman a bill of divorce and dismiss her. He said to them, Because of the hardness of your hearts, Moses allowed you to divorce your wives, but from the beginning it was not so. I say to you, whoever divorces his wife, unless the marriage is unlawful, and marries another, commits adultery. His disciples said to him, If this is the case of a man with his wife, is it better not to marry? He responded, not all can accept this word, but only those to whom it was granted. Some are incapable of marriage because they were born so, some because they were made so by others, some because they have renounced marriage for the sake of the kingdom of heaven. Whoever can accept this ought to accept it. My brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Have you not read from the beginning? The Creator made them male and female and said, For this reason a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. Divorce is always a difficult topic in the church. Many people disagree with the church's teaching and point out that there are other Christian churches who allow for divorce and remarriage. And you know, sometimes we have to hold up to the ideal of the scripture. And it seems very clear to me of what the Lord says here today. He says, therefore, what God has joined together, man must not separate. And you know, it is a covenant that happens between a man and a woman when they come to receive the sacrament of marriage. When they come before the Lord, they make a covenant, which is a bond that really cannot be broken. So even if one member is breaking the covenant, the covenant is still binding. That is what God has with us, his people, in Jesus, a covenant. That even though we break that covenant by sin, God remains faithful to his side of that covenant. And so many people will argue then, well, what about these things that you call annulments? Aren't they just a legal way? You know, sometimes we don't have a true understanding of what an annulment is. An annulment does not mean that a marriage, a legal marriage, did not exist. It does not mean that once it is granted, the children become illegitimate. What an annulment does, it says that for some reason, 
that when that couple stood before the Lord to receive the sacrament of matrimony, there was something flawed about that gathering together. Perhaps one of the parties really could not freely make that decision to say, you are the one and I will forsake all others. Or perhaps they didn't understand the permanence of that sacrament that they were making. And they were just what we call simulating a marriage, pretending to have a marriage. So what an annulment does, it doesn't say a marriage didn't exist. It, it said the sacramental bond that was there never fully took place. Or the sacramental bond was never present. And because the sacramental bond wasn't present, they were not truly united in this covenant. While they were married legally, yes, civilly, yes, they could get divorced. And then the annulment just says the sacramental bond is not, did not exist, and as such, then they could remarry in the church. Many people find that their marriages are difficult and they divorce legally, and then they say they can't receive communion. That is not true. If you were married in the church and you divorced, there is not an issue with that. The issue comes is if you choose to get married again. And when you get married again without having an annulment, that first marriage still has a bond. So you're not free to marry. And that way you've committed adultery. And so it's a very complicated system. It's a very complicated thing. Each and every marriage needs to be examined when it runs into trouble, when it feels separation is necessary. God does not want us to be unhappy. But we need to think about when we make that covenantal bond, when we make that sacramental bond of its permanence, and that's why I always try to talk to, especially those young couples who perhaps are infatuated with each other, and they feel this great feeling of love, which is wonderful, but they don't understand what a sacrifice is of a marriage. The sacrifice of forsaking all others for this person, and then to remain faithful through the ups and downs of life as you age together with one another's illnesses and perhaps becoming incapacitated. All of that is what authentic love is. It's sacrificial, not superficial, which happens a lot. I think that we should really think about, before we enter into any sacrament, whether it is we present our child for baptism, confirmation, whether it is marriage, or whether it is holy orders, when we are receiving those sacraments, we must realize how important they are. And they're not just to be done because, well, that's what everyone does. They're done because we have a commitment and we are making a covenant with another or with Almighty God Himself. So today, let us pray for our world that we may understand the Lord's teaching on marriage, and that we accept that marriage can be difficult. So is life. All of our lives are difficult. Religious life, ordination, priesthood is not easy either. It's always easy to look at the other side and say how wonderful it would be to have a family, to have someone to grow older with, to have children who will follow in your footsteps. And I know many of my Protestant brothers and sisters who are ordained ministers, they look at my life and say, how wonderful it is not to be tied down, not to be encumbered by others. It really is what God calls us to be. It is accepting the truth of the permanence of sacraments. It's accepting the truth and listening to the wisdom of Christ. Let us respond to God's words today by offering him our prayers and petitions.
We pray for our Holy Father, Pope Francis. May he be strengthened and fortified by our prayers as he guides in the, us in the ways of discipleship. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the nations of the world, may the Lord have mercy on the sufferings and trials of all people. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for Christians throughout the world who lack religious freedom. May the Holy Spirit grant them courage to stay strong in their faith. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all married couples and those preparing for the sacrament of matrimony. We ask you, Lord, to give them the strength and the courage to mirror your love and to have sacrificial love for one another and their families, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us gathered here today, may God's Holy Spirit bestow upon us the gift of piety, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, for those suffering from mental illness, for those suffering from addictions, may they be healed. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have recently died, may they soon be embraced by Jesus' loving arms in heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For your needs, your intentions, that we bring to our Father today in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We now take all of these prayers. We unite them into one we lift them up to God our Father, praying as Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Almighty Father, you show us the path to endless joy. Hear our prayers and pour out your grace upon us through your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Before we do that, let us pray an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things. I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you have already come. I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Now the Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Glorify the Lord by your love. Thanks be to God. Holy God, we praise thy name, all in heaven are. 